In this video, we look at finding derivatives using the definition. The previous video, where we developed uh, the rate of change or the slope of a tangent to a curve, essentially allowed us to develop a definition for the derivative of a function. We call the limit of the ratio of function change to variable change, in other words, the slope of the tangent, we call that the derivative of the function itself. So in terms of a definition, we would write the derivative of f of x with respect to x is defined by this limit. We denote the derivative as f dash or f prime, if you like, of x, or sometimes dy dx, and sometimes other notations as well. We define that to be the limit as delta x goes towards zero of the ratio f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. The process of figuring this out or finding this derivative thing is called differentiation. Now originally, to find these derivatives of functions, that definition was used, and sometimes it still is. But these days, we've got many rules and tables of common derivatives already figured out, and it's quite okay to use these in most cases. Calculators and computers even can figure out some of these derivatives for you, and that's fine too. Just to see how it works, for the first couple of cases, we're going to look at the following process, which tells us how to find derivatives from first principles using the definition. Basically, the way it works is to figure out the two components on the top of the ratio, subtract them, divide by the delta x on the bottom, and then if it exists, determine the limit of that above quotient as delta x goes to zero. Let's check it out with an example. We have to determine the derivative, slope of the tangent to the curve, for y equals x squared minus x. We're going to use the definition. So y equals x squared minus f of x, that is our function f of x. So we're going to say that f dashed of x is f at x plus delta x, take away f of x, all divided by delta x, and in here what we're going to do is slot in that limit idea. Figure that out what that is later. So we've got the limit as delta x goes to zero. So this is just going to be the function here, x squared minus x, but with x plus delta x as the input. So we have x plus delta x all squared, take away x plus delta x, then we're going to subtract f of x, which is just x squared minus x. Divide all of that by delta x. We need to simplify, so we're going to expand these parts out. We'll get x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x all squared. Take away an x from here, take away a delta x from the same, and then minus x squared and plus x from the final part, all divided by delta x. Now we expect that there's usually going to be some cancellation here, and indeed there is. There's an x squared and a minus uh, x squared. There's also a minus x and a plus x, which can cancel. Now cleaning that all up, we have 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus delta x, and I can see already that there's a common factor of delta x on the top here. I'm going to cancel that with the one on the bottom. So we cancel one of those, this one there, leaving behind a 1. And we're left then with, not forgetting our limit, in fact, not forgetting our limit all the way through, And the limit as delta x goes to 0 of 2x plus delta x minus 1, and the delta x on the bottom is gone. Now again, like in the previous video, delta x has got nothing to do with 2x or minus 1, but it is there in delta x, of course. Now imagine as delta x goes to 0, this term will go to 0. So we're going to be left with just 2x and minus 1. So the derivative of f with respect to x, f dashed x if you like, is 2x minus 1. That's the rate of change of f with respect to x. It's the slope of the tangent line to f of x at any point. And it's so many things like that. Instantaneous rate of change. Depending on what f means, it's got different interpretations. That's what it is. Now for those of you who already know about derivatives, you will probably be familiar with that just from a table of rules for the derivative of this function. And for everyone else, you'll get used to that kind of thing as well. Normally we won't go through this whole two slide process to find the derivative of x squared minus x. But for now, that is an example of using the definition of the derivative. So where to now? To summarize this video, 
In practice, we rarely use that definition to find derivatives. We normally go to a table or ask a computer or calculator to tell us what it is, if we don't know ourselves. It's useful, though, to know how this thing works, and sometimes it even comes up in computational methods that you need to figure these things out yourself. Um, normally, though, we'll be using uh, the rules that we know and derivative tables as well. So where to? If you haven't, uh, if you have forgotten, or if you're unsure about finding limits, do check those out in a reference text or a website and refresh yourself on those. If you're looking in other texts, check out their first section on introducing derivatives and the definition of the derivative, and make sure that you're attempting the exercises in the worksheets.